Are you in a hurry, guys? <laughs> I've come to realize that certain lessons could have profoundly shaped my life had I known them earlier. I've learned that people are like seasons. We change. <laughs> All aspects of life are subject to change. For instance, the friends we have now might not be the same people we'll spend time with in the future. And that's perfectly fine. People evolve perspectives shift and growth often means moving forward even if it means leaving some people behind I think it's natural for relationships to transform as we develop some people will grow with you while others might stay stagnant and it took me a while to realize that losing people isn't necessarily a bad thing because life is a cycle it is a journey, and we're not meant to stay in the same place. We cycle through different phases, meeting new people, exploring new experiences and new places, and these transitions shape us. The memories we've shared with those who come and go, whether good or bad, are in our hearts. The good memories will stay for sure, fueling our journey as we move through life. I think that Life's seasons bring new growth and new adventures. And each phase is a step toward becoming the person you're meant to be. When people don't like someone, they tend to focus on finding faults. These are often unhappy people, evaluating and judging others because they are too busy dealing with their own insecurities. Happy people, on the other hand, are focused on evaluating and improving themselves. They don't have time to notice others' faults. Understanding this has taught me to accept that not everyone will see me in a positive light, and that's okay. It's a reflection of their perspective, not necessarily the truth. Mary, oh, are you sure you don't want to get this? People who cast you as the villain are struggling with their own issues and using you as a scapegoat for their frustrations. This realization has freed me from the burden of trying to please everyone and it has allowed me to focus on my own growth and happiness. It's simply a part of life and I've learned to prioritize my own values and goals over seeking external validation. You cannot control how others perceive you, and understanding that being a villain in someone's story is inevitable. I've learned to focus on being the hero of my own story living authentically and striving to be the best version of myself. I believe that this has been a powerful reminder for me of the importance of self-acceptance and resilience. It's not selfish, it is essential. When you start reflecting on yourself and working on becoming a better version of you, you begin to set boundaries 
and this can make some people uncomfortable. I noticed that when you start caring for yourself, you lose people. But these are often individuals who shouldn't be in your life anyway. They don't want you to improve because they aren't willing to improve themselves. And this is on them, not a flaw in you. Setting boundaries is also something I have to work on, but I believe that it's a powerful act of self-respect. It's about knowing your worth and refusing to compromise on it, especially when you feel disrespected. Boundaries help protect your mental health by ensuring you're not overextending yourself to please others. I constantly have to work on myself because I am the person I am going to spend the rest of my life with and this is deeply personal and it involves learning to love and care for myself unconditionally and I learned that this self-awareness and self-care is not just beneficial for me it also enhances my relationships with others I think that you attract healthier relationships because you exude confidence and self-respect. Remember, you are the person you are going to spend the rest of your life with. You have to invest to that person, which is you, mentally and physically. By prioritizing my mental health, I think I become a source of strength and inspiration for others, being a positive reinforcement to the world around me. Those who truly care about you will support your journey, while those who don't may fall away. And don't feel guilty about this. It's a necessary part of growth. The concept of adding versus subtracting is something I have yet to master, especially when it comes to savings. Schools never taught me the importance of saving, and growing up in an indigenous family where we barely had enough to cover the basics, savings was never a topic of discussion. Savings is very important, and we all know that, as it gives us the safety net in the future. When I started working, saving still wasn't a priority. Survival mode always kicked in as I tried to provide for three as the sole earner in my family. My focus was always on making ends meet and healing from past traumas. As a child, I was bullied for wearing the same clothes every day. And once I had an income, I found myself buying the things I lacked in my childhood to heal my inner child. However, as I matured, I realized that constantly subtracting from my income to fulfill these old wounds wasn't necessary. I was spending instead of saving, addressing my emotional needs in ways that weren't financially sustainable. For me, savings represent security and a buffer against life's uncertainties. It's about adding to your future stability rather than subtracting from your present resources. Whoever said money isn't important probably never had to worry about it. For those of us who have, we understand that savings are essential. It's not just about the money itself, but it's about the peace of mind and the opportunities it can provide. This realization has taught me to balance my present needs with future security, to add value to my life by ensuring I have a safety net for tough times.
One of the most liberating lessons I've learned is that not all things deserve a reaction. I am under repair. I am constantly rebuilding myself, and I still have to remind myself this a lot. There are days that I feel the need to explain myself, but really, every remark doesn't always have to end up into a discussion or a debate. Sometimes, silence is the best response. It's better to just pause, let things go, to de-escalate the situation. This is what they say, choose your battles wisely. I think this is a sign of maturity and self-control. Silence can be a powerful tool. It can diffuse a boiling situation, providing the space needed for emotions to settle and for clear thinking to emerge. Reacting impulsively, which I still do sometimes, can escalate conflicts and lead to regrettable outcomes. Instead, taking a moment to breathe and assess whether a reaction is truly warranted can save you from unnecessary stress and conflict. This doesn't mean you should never stand up for yourself or others, but rather that you should do so thoughtfully and strategically. What are some of the things you learned recently? 